Speaking of fat asses, speaking of first team all fat yeah, ass in the this? NBA, Mr. Zion Williamson never coming back, apparently. Dude, should they cut should the Pelicans cut ties with, with Zion? I would. I Tell would. the story. Dude, make him make his ass earn it, dude. New reporting coming out saying that saying that Buddy is is now, Buddy. you know, out of shape and that, you know, he he by by some reports out there again, not facts, but some reporting out there is saying that the guy is, is, is just is out of shape and you know he had that setback and that kind of that kind of messed things up. He was Derailed on pace him. to return. Like I and I understand that it's not easy, but the fact of the matter is is you're a professional or you should be and and you're gonna have setbacks. That's going to happen. And and the one thing that you don't ever get an excuse on is rehab y your job your, your only job like you don't have to go to the office you don't have to report to your douchebag boss who's worried about when you're going to clock in all you got to do is rehab your body work your ass off and hoop that's it and you, you can't I, even do that dude i think you have to like, i think you have to cut ties by the him. way they're still a good team even without them that's what's incredible yeah i would agree um Jacob DeLambo says, Monty going in deep. Monty. I mean, Monty. Deep. Monty. Curtis Peters says, Batches. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, however you want to say it. Roger Sales, a member of the program, says, I always call him Gobert. You have to. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Mike Facial Phillips, recognition. Uh, I actually like Rudy, but it's astounding how Kessler is already a better player. Yeah, dude. Yep. He is a better player. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Jaron Eccles says, pull. No, there will be no pull. <laughs> there won't. DeLambo, at least Draymond has rings on those hands to throw them punches. That's what I'm saying, dude. You're such an apologist. That's what I'm saying, dude. Um, let's see. Tanner Plummer says, Jake, why don't you just admit it? You're a Draymond apologist. Yeah, I'm happy to. I'm happy to. You know why? Because the guy wins. And by the way, yeah, he does he's, have rings. He's, the, he's one of the leaders of that team. Yeah, should you be punching people in the face? No. But hey, he's won some rings, and he knows how to he knows how to do that. And you can't uh, that, there is no overcoming like, that argument. Yeah. Oh, you have multiple rings. Okay, that, my bad. Hey, Jordan Poole, Mister Cup of Coffee in the league. You should probably stop running your mouth because you I mean, you know are climbing in the league. Uh, Draymond, you got seventeen rings. I mean, <coughs> he, I joke. The point is, he's one of the main reasons they won all those rings. Yes. And even though he played terribly last year, yes, he in Boston, he had a huge impact in the postseason. You know, uh, Jaron Eccles says uh, we haven't had a poll in ages. There's a reason for that. <laughs> we all need a poll on this show. Hey, I got a poll for you. Stay home. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with votes. Yeah, it's you know Lucas what I'm mom. Yeah, uh, McKinley Cutler. It's one thing to tank so that a pick you didn't trade is good it's another thing to tank while you have two top 20 players so that you can screw another team out of a pick you traded my name is luca Truth. uh san diego state says draymond the visual definition of assault yeah might be dude but you play basketball so you're not going to jail salty drunk says oh man i pray luca lands in utah my god that would be epic that would be epic kurt peters says uh came in late did i miss as the pac-12 burns you did you did Just Hit rewind. Go back to the beginning. Yeah. Uh, it's the first hour of the show. DeLambo says, turns out every practice is just fight night in the NBA. That's right. You know? <laughs> what's up, big bro? <laughs> exactly right. Greg Romano, what's up, Greg? Good to see you. Sorry I'm late. Who's leaving the Pac-12 first, and where are they going? Back to the beginning, bro. Back to the top. Just go all the way to the beginning yeah. of the show. No problem. Uh, McKinley Cutler, Brunson's dad is the reason uh, the Mavs are bad this year, according to Cuban. Yeah, whatever, but, dude. But here's the thing. If you would have extended Jalen Brunson when he was eligible, this would have never happened. Gordon Climb Hayward, like a girl. Gordon Hayward 2.0. Gordon Hayward 2.0. Why did you let Gordon Hayward go out in his restricted free agency year and talk to a bunch of people? Because he wanted to read his blog. Apparently, because that's why he left. That's why he left. Absolutely. Uh, the the Sir Killer. F and A, Monty. I love it. <laughs> exactly right. C. Kaufman says, New York Post had an article saying Colorado will be the first to leave for the Big 12. Wow. They, they did. Wow. Like, incredible, incredible. dude. Incredible. Wow. Incredible. Uh, Salty Drunk says, I bathe in Asado season. That's right. Well, you know. I mean, it'll get in that crevasse. Is that why you're so spicy, bro? You just, you fart and like Asado comes out? Is that what it is? Dude, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, 
That Asado season will get them in them crevices. Um, Joshua Moe says, hey, guys. Hey, guys, hey, guys, 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 guys. Kurt Peters, prime keeping the AC on, <laughs> you know. Jet Wayman, I would disown the Jazz if they got Luca. You and I both. So you have no frame of reference you and I about both. Um, You guys are going to think I'm crazy, but I want Damian Leonard on the Jazz. You mean Damian Lillard? On the Jazz. He's too old. Leonard, Lillard, who's keeping track? You know, uh, he's too old. I think it, the, the, he's past the window, in my opinion. Uh, Nate Davis. Rudy Gobert, Gobert. He, <clears throat> uh, he should be expended for the whole season, suspended for the whole season for the playoffs too. What do you guys think for the Jazz this offseason? Well, it depends. Okay, let me ask you this. Who's the best point guard in the draft? Me. Probably Scoot Henderson. Yeah. You're not going to get Scoot Henderson. No. But the name that I would be all in on is Ammon Thompson. That motherfucker don't miss, man. I'm telling you that if you get Ammon Thompson and his twin brother, uh, Asur Thompson, I, I am much more on the Ammon train than I am on the Asur train. Right. I'm probably getting that name wrong, but fine. Uh, I think Ammon Thompson is everything that you've ever wanted. Mm -hmm. I think that the, if if you get if you get Ammon with the ninth pick, I'd be stunned if he were available. Yeah, I like the project, projection of Grady Dick. It gives me a lot of like material. Stay hard to use when a guy's last name is Dick. I mean, it's endless. He can also play a little bit. I love his durability. Um, I need a Dick. And hey, man, a lot of people compare him to Grayson Allen, but more skilled. I'm fine with that. I don't like people tripping people. Why are you tripping, boo? Um, but I love Grady Dick's game and his name. And if I can... I need a dick. I, you know. Yeah. That poor kid was abused in school. Um, and then with the Jazz at 13, I mean, I probably would be on Nick Smith Jr. Yeah. I love Nick Smith Jr. I, yeah. I, from Arkansas, I'm a huge fan. Those two are the, in my opinion, those are the two guards that if I'm the Jazz, I I am targeting. Yeah, 100%. Those are the two guys I want. Hundo and P. If you can address point guard, if you can get a franchise-level point guard in this draft, you're in good shape. Because they are hard to come by in free agency and trade because NBA franchises know not to trade them. Because you wind up in situations like, you know, Brunson in, in Dallas, where you just, there's no replacing that. There's no replacing Jalen Brunson in Dallas. Nope. And it's absolutely crippled that franchise. And you look at the best fran you look at the best point guards in the NBA. I mean, I would even say combo guards. The best combo guards in the NBA, the the I the, the impact that they have, the Steph Curry's of the world. You know, you even look at the at the Drew Holidays. Mm -hmm. Look at the impact he's having. You know, you look at what Chris Paul did for the Suns. I, I mean, the list is endless. And then you look at a team like the Lakers who don't have a point guard. They don't have a true point guard on that team of, of consequence. And they have struggled for it. And defensively now, since D'Angelo's gotten there, and maybe this is my point, since D'Angelo's gotten in L.A., what have we seen with their defense? Their defense has gone back up, right? But now he's been hurt. Okay, Dennis Schroeder, not the same defender, not the same three-point shooter, Right? You look at Austin Reeves having the impact that he's having, right? Look at SGA and o OKC. Mm -hmm. You look at, I mean, there are a team after team where you just have these combo guards that are just kicking ass. And so it's not a surprise at all. Like I look at the top of the draft board and here's the biggest question. It, obviously, Victor Wambanyama is going to go number one. There's no doubt about that. Scoot Henderson or Brandon Miller? I think, dude. If the let like, take skill? the take the gun thing out of it, you know, just if the, the gun thing. If but. the gun thing with Brandon, but I'm serious. Yeah. If the gun thing with Brandon Miller never happens, I'm taking Brandon Miller. But now you got to take Scoot Henderson. If you are, if you're San Antonio at number two, or you are who Houston or Detroit, depending on where the ping pong ball. But Houston's land. got like three Brandon Millers. They do. So to me, it's like. The problem in Houston is you need leadership, not well, necessarily you the best your, talent. But you fired your coach. You did. I think you have to package some of these young guys now and move on from it because you, you have got to find 
in my opinion, you got to find the best available veteran player yeah. who can lead that group. And it is not James Harden. Yeah. Everybody thinks James Harden's going back to Houston. That's not how I would do it. Yeah. But anyway, my point is. Yeah, I mean, I would probably go player for player. You're probably going Brandon Miller just because yes. of his size. But yes. I think that the thing with Scoot is that you, Scoot is incredibly pliable to a winning team right now. I mean, you know, he, just the handle and the ability to initiate offense alone, take the scoring out of it, you know, take the pick and roll instincts out of it, yeah. uh, you know, all that stuff. You set that aside. If you, if I just said to you, hey, put Buddy on the Clippers as an example, right? They're going to yeah. be better. I, I mean, who who's projected? Who's who's projected to get Scoot right now? Is it Detroit or? Well, who? I mean, we don't know what it'll be, but I would think it'll right be now, Detroit, Houston, yeah. or San Antonio. You know, so like, I mean, I mean, look at Houston. Just as an example, I mean, Scoot put even in that same group now, Scoot makes them better. The problem is, is you know, like San Antonio went way downhill. After DeJounte Murray left or got traded or whatever, like it just it just changes you. But if you look at also the Jazz also need power forwards. I mean, um, you know, Jairus Walker out of Houston is a guy that I don't know how you don't love what you see out of that guy. Yeah. The natural ability to hit threes at that size, I think, is fantastic. Um, you know, I mean, Anthony Black's a guy that I think a lot of people like. I, I am, I am, I am. I'm far higher on Ammon Thompson than I am on Anthony Black. Um, just because I think, now obviously, the experience level is completely different. Right. I mean, but I, I think Thompson's upside is... Massive. Jesus. Like, I don't even know... And the Jazz have shown great ability now to develop well, guys, which I think you really have to consider. And this this David Fisdale thing is real, in my opinion. That's what I'm saying. Grady Dick is a real nice fit. The only thing I have on Grady Dick that I don't like is, is that, his last name. Well, that, yeah. And and that, you know, he's he's another Laurie marketing esque player, stylistically speaking. And, you, and no. that's what do you mean? What do you mean? What do I, I mean? I totally disagree with that. I think Grady Dick is a guy that I think he is much more versatile. The question is, does his game translate? Does his physicality, does Grady Dick's physicality translate to the NBA? And I don't even need it year one, but does it translate in two, three, four? And I don't think it does. You can't, in this league anymore, from the guard position, I don't believe you can be on the floor all the time. When, and when I say that, you can't be lying on the floor all the time. I think that's where you're you're going to wind up in trouble. And I think he's a guy who likes to bang. And at Kansas, hey, dude, that's all well and good. That's all well and good. In the NBA, I don't think – and I don't think – I mean, am I wrong? I don't know what um, – maybe I should – we were just looking at Grady Dick today. Um, he's not the size um, that Laurie is. He's 6'8". Six, 6'8". Eight. Six, eight, I need – 6'8", 205. Right, but he's a kid. Right. He's he's got to grow into his frame. Sure, but I mean, what, what is, is that? What is that? Okay, I mean, Laurie's so a seven footer, isn't he? He I is. Think. Yes, he's seven foot, but he is also two forty. Right, like that's two totally different body types. Yeah, and I think the length that the length at his size and the skill at his size ha is very intriguing about Grady Dick. I just I view him in. in I don't know, the old the white guard from the Clippers who got traded. I can't remember his name now, but Kennard? Yeah, Luke Kennard. Is he better and different than yeah, Luke Kennard? I think he's, he's more dynamic. I think he's way better than Kennard now. I but think if he's... but if you take out the physicality in his game, if he shows up, if he's listed at two oh five, is he gonna show up at two ten or is he gonna show up at one ninety? It's a good question. That's it could to me that's the biggest concern because Grady Dick likes to bang. Yeah. And if if you're gonna bang in the NBA, you cannot wind up on the floor constantly. Yeah, I guess my thing with I I guess where we disagree on Grady Dick is like like I do think on like their body types are different. You're right, I agree with you. Lori weighs more. The seven footer, great. But when I'm what I'm talking about is how it actually translates on the floor. Oftentimes, Lori will run into a guy. Oftentimes, he is shooting the three. Like. He is your most dynamic and best player right now for the Utah Jazz. And I look at Grady Dick. Certainly. And I see flashes of it. I see a guy who can shoot a three with ease. I see a guy, like you just said three times, who likes to bang and likes to use his shoulder. And I agree. Because of that, you can't show up to camp at 190 for whoever the hell drafts you. You need to be pushing. You know, by the end of your rookie year, you'd love to see him in the two teens somewhere, even if that's two 
13, you know, like I'd love to see you add that kind of muscle. But ultimately, I think the cool thing and the thing that I like for the Jazz about Grady Dick is that you can use him in a variety of different ways. I mean, if you had, you know, again, if Colin Sexton's playing the one, let's say, you know, and you've got you've got Ochai at the two and Laurie at the three. Yeah. Grady Dick can slide into into the three and Laurie can move to the four because Laurie's a seven footer. Like there are ways to work that in. Or obviously, Grady Dick could easily come off the bench too. Or you could just take Drew Timmy and then everything would be fine. God, Drew Timmy, the savior of everybody. Everybody was telling me, oh, he's never going to be a first-round pick. He's not even getting drafted, you cock. Yeah, now he's like from 25 to 30 in just about every mock trap. Like, are, are you mm -hmm. serious? I would never take Drew Timmy. But I was just being a jerk. Uh, you know, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, main event says, already have two former Jayhawks on the Jazz. We could use one more. Uh, you know. Gary says, got to pause it after saying his name, Grady Dick. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't disagree. Q uh, Janus. You can use Dick in a variety of different ways. He can slide in the three. Anita Dick and Ming. Mike Phillips. Anita I Dick. I mean, when your Dick is flexible and waves <laughs> in opposition. You know, when you can put your Dick in the different positions. Hiscock. Uh, you know, and, and uh, again, I'm kind of with Mike Phillips here. The way you Hiscock. use that Dick. Hiscock. Is, you know. <laughs> I mean, um, Holden Middick, you know, okay. I'm, you know, dude, I mean, I need a dick and me. I, well, I need some dick on my team too. I need a dick, you know, um, and, you know, I was talking to Mrs. Monty. She's a huge fan of the dick. Hiscock. I mean, she really likes that kid, you know, um, she probably stop. Uh, truck stop. Gumby says hot dog. Yeah, I mean, Grady Dick got like a dozen hot dogs in his contract every I'm game. I'm so bricked up right now. You know. Um, you, I mean, I'm just saying. Aaron oh. Wilson Aaron Wilson gifted one show membership. Well done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Truck Stop Gumby was gifted the membership. Had a boy. Had a girl. I think, you are. I think Truck Stop Gumby hangs out just looking for free membership. The Rock Attack! That's what I'm saying. Uh, Salty Drunk says, this is a national program. Talk about postseason teams, LOL. Well, listen, I think, are we going to talk about, you know, putting Dick in the right position or are we going to talk about national teams making the playoffs? I need a Dick. You know. I mean, we did. I mean, we talked about the T-Wolves, right? You, well, Rudy Gobert put his Dick in the wrong position. And, so fast. you know, uh, I'm just... So James Knight wants us to talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder. We get it. You want us to get it, you're giddy. We get it. James um, Knight's giddy about the, the giddy about the Oklahoma City. You just City have to like snap out of it a little bit. Thunder. Um, and stuff. I'm giddy about TridayTrading.com. We will talk NBA matchups here in a moment. Uh, TridayTrading.com. Go there right now. Do it with me. Pull it up on your phone. Triday Trading. Dot com. Um, what you're looking for on their website is you're looking for this uh, graphic. It is just down the page a little bit. And look at step number two. Try us out for 30 days for only $10. This is a special offer for those who register and watch. Your $10 will be donated to a charitable organization. So let's say you donate your $10. You go through the 30-day program. You're like, no, this is not for me. Okay, cool. You got a tax write-off because you donated $10 to charity and you walked away. It took you $10 to understand that, hey, try day trading and day trading wasn't your thing. But what if that $10 changes the trajectory of your life? What if you can stop bitching and moaning about your job every day and work for yourself? What if you go to trydaytrading.com, sign up for the 30-day $10 membership, and all of a sudden you're making the money that you always dreamt of? And now you can afford the house that you wanted to afford. Maybe your kids don't share a room. They each have their room, right? Maybe you're driving the, the van you've always wanted or the SUV you've always wanted. Maybe you're driving that van to Disneyland instead of your neighbor always going to Disneyland with his kids. You're taking your kids to Disneyland. That's how close you are. And I don't even say that as an exaggeration. We're talking about thousands of dollars a day. When you go through the Tri-Day Trading Program, they have graduates every day in this country that make thousands of dollars because they day trade. 
and they used the proprietary information and algorithms and systems that they learned at TridayTrading.com with their one-on-one professional trading coach. That's what you get. You get one-on-one coaching and mentoring. And when you're done with the program, you still get mentoring. You still get coaching. And oh, by the way, your first trades, when you're nervous and you're out of the program, you're like, man, I don't want to lose money. I don't want to lose money. Your first trades are with TridayTrading.com's money. And when you make money with their money, they give you 80% of the profit. Absolutely nothing to lose. Live the life you've always dreamt of. TridayTrading.com. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show TridayTrading.com right now. Uh, James Knight wants us to talk about his good old buddies, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Mm-hmm. And my question v- very simply is, if you are the Oklahoma City Thunder and you know, you know what the matchups are because I actually think Wednesday their season ends against the Pelicans. And right now, New Orleans is minus five, 228. Yeah. Um, that game is in New Orleans, by the way. Uh, it's on ESPN at 730. At Smoothie King Center. I just don't see a matchup outside of Shea Gilgis Alexander that Oklahoma City wins here. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on the style of the game, though, too. Like, I, I would agree with that. I think you're outmatched in the half court, which is typically what playoff game playoff basketball is it's usually half court possession by possession but i also think you know specifically in the play-in in the first round of the play-in you still have a lot of up and down games you still have uh, situations where the game feels more like just a hyped up regular season game rather than a seven game back and forth you know possession by possession type setup so in my opinion james the way you want to go about trying to win this game is getting out in transition I, i i would think that you would want to 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 get back defensively, right? You would want to be committed to that. You would not want to cr- uh, crash the offensive glass uh, too aggressively. So get back on defense and, and try to create some turnovers. Try to create some chaos. Try to create some awkwardness for New Orleans offensively and see what that gets you. But I'm telling you, the, the opportunities you get to push the pace in transition, you have got to take advantage of because you are not in a place where you're beating this team in the half court straight up. That's not happening. Did you see Kenny Lofton Jr., by the way? Bro. This guy scores 42 points and doesn't make a three-pointer and only shoots 12 free throws because he went 17 of 25. Yeah. Dominated. 14 rebounds. Yeah. A steal. And only two turnovers. His royal thickness put on a show. Dude, him and Zaire Williams, that was awesome. Um, But my whole point in this is, I think the nice thing is, is that SGA and Giddy have a lot of rest here. And I think when you look at the way that we saw SGA play against the Jazz, and you, you feel really confident that that's what you're going to be able to get. That's what you need. And I think, honest to goodness, I think there's very little room for error here out of SGA. He's got to have that 30-point game. Right. And I think Josh Giddy's got to be 25 and 10. Like, he's got to have a double-double. And really, he's got to be pushing a triple-double because Mm -hmm. I I just think the Pelicans, the Pelicans are a problem, even without Zion. I I think they're a problem. 